Good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Dicto Collections track. Uh, this track is facilitated by my colleague Hilary and myself. Uh, Hilary is a resource sharing librarian at St. Fold University, and myself, I work as the head library and documentation center at public procurement and disposal of public assets. Uh, we have three sessions beginning today and continuing throughout Wednesday and, fr and Friday. We are especially excited about the projects in this track uh, because as we are aware, digital collections are more important than ever in our current environment. Um, they make GLAM institutions more accessible to a broader audience. And also link data is very crucial for making connections with, within and across uh, collections, but uh, they can also bring challenges of its own uh, when working with heterogeneous sets of metadata. Uh, when we discover the workflows, tools, and models that the projects in this track have successfully created and managed, uh, link data also helps to improve discovery in the various dicto collections. Uh, you'll find a link, there are some links here on our screen uh, to the full conference schedule and also to the conference website, the Twitter handle, the Slack invites, and also uh, guidelines for the community uh, participations. Uh, we are also following the LD4P community participation guidelines as you, you're seeing on the screen, you just have to click there and access it. Um, if you would like to ask any questions or make any comments uh, following today's presentation, you may use the Zoom raised hand feature uh, if you like to speak or also to have a Q&A panel to ask a written question. Uh, welcome you once again. I would like to invite my colleague Larry to introduce Bethany. Thank you. We're delighted to have Bethany Radcliffe um, and her presentation, Audi Annotate, Link Data for Sound. Bethany is a graduate student at the University of Texas at Austin, where she is completing an MS in Information Studies and an MA in English. Bethany's interests focus broadly on digital humanities, metadata, archival theory, sound, and accessibility. Bethany works as a graduate student. Uh, Bethany works as a graduate research assistant at the Harry Ransom Center and as a graduate assistant in the English department with Dr. Tanya Clement on Audi Annotate. Upon her graduation in 2021, Bethany plans to continue uh, working with digital projects and metadata in archives, libraries, or special collections. Let's see. Looks like, did Bethany drop off? Let's see if she can rejoin. We'll just wait for a minute. All right, we'll just wait another minute and see if Bethany can rejoin. She is reconnecting, it sounds like her Wi-Fi went out, so hopefully she'll be joining us very shortly. Thank you for your patience.
And if you already have some questions that you're thinking of asking Bethany, you're welcome to start putting them in the Q&A. Um, or uh, if you're interested in audio materials or working with some audio collections and want to share what you're working on in the chat, we could have a little impromptu discussion before Bethany rejoins. Okay, Bethany is back. Let me just make sure we've got her. Here we go. Just making her able to share her screen. And I'm so sorry about that. Uh, my Wi Fi uh, decided to go out at the perfect time. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad you're back and I can. I introduced you, so we're all set whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay, let me um, share my screen and then I'll um, get this going. <laughs> okay. Can anyone see my screen or am I? Frozen again. I hope not. I can. I can see, and you're okay. You're awesome. Good. Um, just let me know if I freeze up or something. I think my bandwidth is really low, so I actually turned off my video. But um, today I'm going to present about uh, Audi Annotate, which is a project that I'm part of, um, and I will be talking about linked data for sound. Uh, let me just get to the next slide. Uh, today I'll introduce you to the tool, um, a quick introduction, and then a demo. And then I'll talk about how we use uh, linked data through IIIF um, and about our documentation. And then we'll have some time for a QA. and a So the Audi Annotate uh, project uh, team members are uh, Dr. Tanya Clement, who is a professor in the English department at the University of Texas, Austin, um, and also has a project called HIPSTAS, which is High Performance Sound Technologies for Access and Scholarship. Bethany ben Brumfield and Sarah Brumfield are the um, co-leads of this project of Brumfield Labs. I'm a graduate research assistant. Another graduate research assistant is Liz Fisher, and our undergraduate research assistant is Kylie Warkenton. Uh, um, Bethany, could you maximize your browser for us? Oh, yes. Is and that better? Yes, that's great. Okay. And could you paste the link for the slides in the chat too, just in case anyone wants yeah. to follow on. Thank you so much. I meant to do that earlier. Oh, no problem. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll start with a little bit about Audi Annotate. It was funded um, initially by a um, digital extension grant from the American Council of Learned Societies, which allowed us to um, create the web application itself, Audi Annotate, which is a static site that allows users to create and publish IIIF AV manifest. Um, and it is minimal computing and runs on top of a GitHub repository. Um, this also allowed for documentation and workflows of use cases that we have documented to increase research value um, and multiple workshops actually that have all been documented on our GitHub pages, which I will um, talk about later too. Um, so the idea for Audi Annotate came about um, from accessibility issues in general with archival audio. Um, it's often on legacy and analog formats that require specialized conversion. When digitized, audio materials often can't leave the archive. Um, luckily, more and more, LAM institutions are making audio available, uh, but audio rights often stand in the way. And overall, because of all of these issues, a lack of descriptive metadata exists and contributes to this deficit in accessibility. Um, so, Having all of that in mind, the goal of Audi Annotate is to create a way for researchers to collect, store, and aggregate notes about audio recordings along with timestamps from archival audio. 
um, audio annotate allows users to upload metadata that's associated with those audio recordings. Like I said earlier, it's a static site um, and it was created using Jekyll um, and GitHub pages. It doesn't hold data and it runs on top of a GitHub repository. And right now it's only available for use on openly accessible audio for which an MP3 link can be provided. So in order to make some of that make sense, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna start with a quick walkthrough before I talk about the more technical aspects of it. And I pre-recorded this because sometimes um, connectivity issues uh, make the application not work so well. So okay, I will show you how to make this bigger and go ahead and play it. To use the Audi Annotate application. And this is assuming that you already have annotations ready um, and available. Um, if you don't know how to do that, we actually have documentation here on how to um, use Audacity, particularly their label track feature, to create um, audio, uh, annotations for your audio that can be uploaded onto Audi Annotate. And we have resources and demonstration videos of how to do that here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the application. And assuming I'm ready to create my project, I will click Sign In. This will take me to GitHub, where I will authorize um, Audi Annotate to make changes and to create a GitHub repository. When I click Sign In, it'll redirect me back to the Audi Annotate application. Um, and then these are my titles of my already existing projects. Um, I'm gonna create a new project by clicking this button here. And I'm gonna be using Margaret Atwood Spoken Web um, from Spoken Web in Canada. Um, and this is a Margaret Atwood audio. So uh, I'm just gonna call this a spoken web project. Maybe in this project, I'm gonna be using multiple uh, sounds from uh, the spoken web um, resources. So I'll just give it a simple description. I'll say audio annotations from uh, spoken web audio. Or, oops, I'm gonna spell spoken web right too. Um, and then the project slug, this is actually what um, displays on your GitHub, and this is your GitHub repositories URL. So what I'm doing here is telling, um, entering the metadata for the GitHub repository that's being created. When I click create project, this tells GitHub to create this repository. It might take a minute. Um, so we'll just wait on that. Perfect. And so this status symbol tells me that it's building. Um, if I reload the page, it might update and say ready. Sometimes it takes it a minute. If I click it, there we go. It's ready now. So this tells me that my project is published um, here on GitHub, and if we click it, we'll see this. It's empty because we have not associated any audio with this yet. So I'm gonna click New Item Manifest, and this is the IIIF Manifest, where we will enter metadata that will be built into this manifest automatically. So like I said, I'm using, um, I'm using Spoken Web Audio. If I can get to that tab on the screen share, perfect. So this is the Margaret Atwood Spoken Web 1974 audio that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to grab that title and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to take out the comma just in case that's an issue. I don't think it is. So we need an audio file URL. Audio in Audi Annotate in this application is not stored. We don't store any audio. You can't upload a file. You have to use a direct publicly available link to that file. So what I did here was, uh, this is an embedded player. A lot of times you can, um, you can right click on an embedded player to get the MP3, this one you can't. So I actually went to the page source and was able to access this. This is what you want. You want something with a .mp3, a direct link to that audio. So I'm gonna copy that and going to add it here to the audio file URL. I also need to know the duration, so I'm going to look back at that. It's 59.46. I think I've used this sound before, so it'll probably pop up. Um, and now we're going to enter some metadata uh, on the provenance of this audio. So I'm going to get this homepage where 
the audio project is. Uh, the provider is Spoken Web Montreal. And then the provider URL, I'm going to paste that same file and just delete, or that same link, and just delete the uh, rest of the link. So I get their home page, and I'm going to save that. Uh, when I click Save, this data will be published into our GitHub rep repository uh, into this uh, manifest, this IIIF manifest. And it might take a minute. That was fast. So I'm going to actually open this up and show you what this looks like. So this is our GitHub pub, uh, pages site. And we get a 404 error because it's probably, it's still building, even though it said ready for a second, it's taking a little bit of time. So we'll let that go. Uh, while that's building, I will actually see if we can view the manifest. This is the manifest that I just created using that information that we uploaded. And, um, we have the label, which I created, which is the title of the audio, the homepage information, the provider information, and then here we have our item. And this is the um, IIIF canvas. It has a duration, um, and it has the, um, uh, it's associated with the um, audio and the sound. So this is the link to the .mp3. We know that it's a sound and we have this duration here. Um, the target is the canvas. So once we add annotations, this will be the target for those as well. Um, so now that this is ready too, I can also show you the GitHub page and what that looks like. We haven't added annotations yet, but this is our player. If I click play, the audio plays. Um, and once we add annotations, this will make a lot more sense. Um, and um yeah that's pretty much it so now we're going to add annotations so i'm just going to call this uh layer one and we don't want to have any spaces in this title um you can use underscores spaces create some confusion with the player we're going to choose a file and let's see if i even know what i'm getting here Okay, I'm gonna add this file. I'm just doing a simple file with a few annotations and then I'll click add here. Once I click add, this will generate my annotations. These annotations are associated with a um, timestamp that Audacity helps me to generate. And again, if you want that um, information, we can we have it on our website on how to use audacity to generate these annotations um, and i can actually add more layers to the same project and distinguish them based on layer so let's look at our project now if we go to uh, the github pages site it opened up the player and you can see here that the audio will play we have all of our um, annotations here associated with layer one they can be reorganized based on time based on the annotation title um, and based on the layer i only have one layer here so that's not going to change um, but for example if i click here you can hear that i marked some applause and here i marked that a poem was starting called newsreel man and firing squad you can also access the manifest from this page as well. It doesn't look very pretty in the uh, incognito window, but um, that is your manifest. So that is pretty much it. Okay. Um, so that was uh, that walkthrough. And then the next um, video that I'm going to show is um, going to explain a little bit more about what you saw as far as linked data, um, which we have in the format of IIIF uh, for AV. A lot of people here might already know about that, so some of this could be um, things you're already um, familiar with, but I'm going to go ahead and play this other pre-recorded video, and hopefully it will load. Perfect. So now I'm going to talk about um, 
what makes audi annotate linked data? So basically the answer is IIIF, um, which is the International Image Interoperability Framework. And the little asterisk there says that now it's with AV. So now instead of just being bound to images and associating multiple images, IIIF, it um, allows associating AV and AV with images. So, um, and uh, our workflow in particular associates user-created annotations with timestamp data from archival audio sounds. We, and our um, idea and values and structure really take linked open data and um, linked open usable data from Rob Sanderson to heart and have tried to create this and the work that we've done. Um, and AAAF is a consortium. It is um, a group of people who are working and standardizing um, standards so that they are interoperable and so that you can easily or somewhat easily um, make things display for users um, and be accessible and associating multiple objects together. Um, that's IIIF in a nutshell. And I will say um, a lot of these IIIF slides I have remixed and borrowed from Ben and Sarah Brumfield's more detailed uh, explanation. They are pros and their explanations were remixed from many people in the IIIF community. So these next few IIIF slides are not my uh, full creation. Um, so the next part of, uh, or the next, I guess, important asset of IIIF, uh, I kind of mentioned this already, it defines metadata standards for digital items, provides a consistent API for accessing items, and it, um, and the metadata that surrounds them and how to present and associate these items together. So very much about usability and access um, and standardization. It allows for targeting objects on a canvas, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Um, so this is traditional IIIF, IIIF that is not for AV, the first uh, IIIF. So you have a canvas, um, and I forgot to switch that slide, I'm sorry. You have a, a canvas here that um, is pretty much on like an X, Y axis um, so that you can target different points within this canvas. Um, this is 2D. It's associated with an image on the other side. Um, so those items are associated and um, different elements within them could be, um, could be pinpointed or targeted. And you, know, you could have 50 images that were all associated together or if there was like a large piece of art that had pictures taken from every side, you could associate those together on the IIIF canvas. So what about for um, for doing the same thing, but for temporal, uh, for um, time-based media. Um, so could we have access, viewing, annotation, search, but on time-based media? And um, the answer for that is yes. And so this is a um, kind of the idea of a canvas with duration. So rather than it be image-based, um, it it now has a direct um, a time, and you can see that here in seconds. So we still have our canvas, we still have our canvas size, um, it's spatial and it's temporal. It has um, a time where things can be targeted uh, and pointed to within this canvas. Um, and so I'm going to, open uh, the next link. So a IIIF manifest is the standardized machine readable structure that connects the canvas, and in our case, the temporal canvas, to the user created and uploaded annotations. So I've put a link here um, to one of those manifests. Let's see if I can get that to open and look pretty. Yeah, so this is the manifest you uh it's also in the walkthrough um you can see that i have a um an item a canvas uh the duration here uh and it's targeting that sound that uh that is with the um that is with the canvas so this direct link to the sound and the duration um, and again this is the body the sound is the body, the canvas is the target. Um, 
So that's how, that's how these annotations uh, are, become associated within the manifest to uh, the canvas. And here's a more detailed look. This is actually from, um, if you go to the GitHub data that's stored in the repository, and I think I actually linked out to that. Let's see. So this is the um, published in the repository publicly that you allow Audi Annotate to have access to. And you can see that this annotation um, target is particularly this exact range. This is a range. Um, this, these exact seconds. And let's see if we can see one that's just a point. Um, I think I put one on here. Yeah, so this one was a point selector. It's not a range, just one, one time, uh, one point in this um, audio file. So let me go back to my slides here. That's a very simple overview of IIIF. Again, um, we do have more detailed slides linked on our website. Um, actually, I can show you here. Uh, we have really tried to do a lot of documentation on this project. So we have, um, we have workshop workflows, we have virtual workshop kind of step-by-step step that you can follow along with. Um, these were actual real workshops, but if you go to the agenda, um, you can follow along and do um, and learn about the project via these slides on uh, Audi Annotate and Spoken Web and on a more detailed look at IIIF AV. Um, we have information on how to download Audacity and how to use that to create your annotations. And if you um, also would like more demonstration videos, we have videos on how um, to do that as well. If you're interested in um, more of the project documentation itself, um, you can read about that here. We have some information on um, different workshop reports, different aud uh, audio annotating tool reports. And um, in addition to the um, Audi Annotate documentation. I'm also going to show you uh, the GitHub. So I'm going to go to my own GitHub. So this is the Audi Annotate GitHub. You can actually see how um, the, the Audi Annotate um, data is stored and how this site um, kind of runs um, on top of a GitHub repository. Uh, now, when you actually create your own um, uh, Audi Annotate project, it creates a different repository, so a repository directly into your GitHub. Um, so this is the one that I just created, and you could go in here and you can view all of your data, you can view your manifest, um, you can see everything that I just showed, that I showed you in the tutorial. So um, if we click into here, we can see Canvas, we can see the layer information. This is where you see your target points. Um, you can go in and see the manifest. Yeah, you can view your manifest, um, how this uh, manifest was created in the target Canvas. Um, so that's part of the linked data and the open linked data that we have by creating this through GitHub we were able to really um, share um, what this looks like and the technical aspects of it because that's really important to our project. Um, and then something else that I just wanted to tag along to this is that um, kind of the reception of, uh, from people that have attended our workshops and seen this, a lot of professors are interested in using this as a teaching tool in class for analyzing audio, which is really awesome and I think can open up a new wave of um, critique and looking at audio alongside, for example, literary text, because that's not always done. Um, and then we've also had LAM professionals uh, expressing interest in the use of this tool uh, to increase accessibility, which is pretty much its original intent. Um, and something else that I'm interested in and that actually came up in our last workshop is, you know, how can we facilitate workflows using this tool for linked data? 
Um, could this be helpful for making audio more accessible on public platforms for the cataloging process? So that's something that I'm interested in personally and would love to see uh, happen some more. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for listening to my talk and I think we'll have our Q&A next. Okay, I hope everyone could hear that um, and that I didn't freeze up on anyone during that time. That was excellent, Bethany. Uh, it was a really great demo and clear and very understandable. So thank you so much. Um, it looks like we have some questions in our Q&A and some comments in chat that uh, everyone was able to hear it and it was fantastic and great stuff. So um, let's see. Uh, so we have some in the Q&A panel if you want to follow along. We have do video files share some of the same accessibility problems as audio files and could audio annotate be used for video? Yeah, um, I definitely think video files uh, in an archival setting do have a lot of the same issues. Um, right now, uh, the technology and the capability of a AAAF manifest allows um, for video to be used, but on the way that uh, Audi Annotate displays, we do not have a way to show the video. Um, I've actually attempted using a YouTube um, file before and it looks like it's working and then the sound won't play and the video um, cannot play, but uh, that would be a very um, valuable um, intro, like expansion to look into. Um, I'd be curious about making that work. <laughs> and it looks like the next one from Huda, is there a possibility for adding annotation text real time i.e. not as a file, but in a text box. Would that be supported by the underlying technology now, if not in the interface? And she follows up, but appears so looking at the explanation of the manifest right now, it seems to be storing value and or label for annotations and not necessarily file URLs. Yeah, I mean, it. we've only ever um, used this in a way where we upload an existing uh, TSV or TXT mm -hmm. file. Um, and uh, that's that's our workflow, but I I could see that potentially being um, you know a valuable direction, and I think the Brumfields would definitely have a more thorough answer on that. Um, but that's a great question. Thank you for asking. And it looks like our next is what is the data format in the annotations.txt layer file. Um, the, the one that I uploaded, is that the question? Um, the, the text files that I uploaded are, um, a TSV and they're format, they're formatted as like, um, a tab delimited file. Um, and Audi Annotate actually is what we use to generate them, but you could, you could do it by hand, um, as long as you have a timestamp in one column and then the annotation in the next column. And that's all you would need. And then from Jesse, thank you so much, Bethany. I really appreciate these integrations with GitHub. Are you investigating an archival element in these project workflows, say at the Wayback Machine? Have you considered that maybe even the JSON itself could be archived, which would include the metadata as well as the links to the various audio objects with added layers of depth if you did not want to archive the design elements of the project completely? Um, we have not considered that, but that's a really interesting thought um, when it comes to, um, you know, archiving this overall. Um, and I will definitely note that. Thanks for bringing that up. And then do these annotations use web annotation vocabulary? Apologies if you already specified this and I missed it. Mm, so the annotations themselves um, are um, you know, generated um, by the user, um, but we do everything that we upload is a W3C um, standardized. So I hope I'm answering that in a way that makes sense. <laughs> uh, 
it looks like there's another from Steve. I'm working with a group who is interested in annotating biodiversity related sounds like bird songs. The primary purpose would be for sharing the annotations with other labs or aggregators. Can you talk a little bit about how the linked data would be packaged slash shared, for example, in a triple store? Have you experimented with this? Um, that is a really interesting question and I do not have the expertise to answer that. I'm so sorry. Um, but I, if you put it in the, um, the Slack channel, I could definitely get back to you with a better answer. Um, that sounds really cool though. We can make sure that gets copied over to Slack. Yeah, and if you have any other follow-up questions, I, um, I will be on the Slack and um, able to provide resources or answer to the best of my ability. It looks like these are all the questions that have come in so far. Does anyone have any final questions? Oh, it looks like there's another. Using image as a target may have been a funny hack, would you have liked target to be audio duration? Um, I'm not sure if I know exactly what this question is asking, um, but the target, uh, the, the time stamp on an audio um, is what allows it to be associated with the, man with the canvas, if that helps at all. <laughs> Um, Are you still there, Bethany? It looks like you froze. Somewhere, right? Oh, you um, froze for a second, but uh, Dinesh is saying they'll look it up and connect to later. Thank you. Okay. I stopped my video in case that's making my bandwidth worse. Are there any additional questions? Um, we will post the link to the presentation in the session description, as well as the recording once it's available on YouTube. Jesse is wondering if the question may be about using audio timestamps to target annotations. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so kind of the opposite of what we're doing, where we're using the annotation body and having that point to the timestamp. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I feel like I don't have a complete answer for any of these, but you guys are making me think a lot about what we're doing. <laughs> are there any other questions? So far, I'm not seeing any, but um, as Bethany mentioned, feel free to ask anything that comes to mind uh, on our Slack channel, LD4 2020 Digital Collections Track, and we can continue the conversation there. Definitely, and um, I'll put my email here too. If anyone has any questions, I just put that into the chat. Um, and yeah, I'm also pretty active on Twitter. Um, I can put my Twitter handle too. Uh, it's mostly just like, you know, library stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bethany, for this excellent uh, tool demo and presentation today really enjoyed it. And um, thank you for kicking off our digital collections track. We'll have uh, two more sessions, uh, Wednesday and uh, Friday. I'll just share the our track schedule here. So on Wednesday, we'll have Looking Beyond LC Wikidata for Metadata Reconciliation and Enhancement, and then using IIIF to help improve uh, search and discovery of digital cultural heritage material. And then on Friday, 
will have content enrichment of institutional repository records consuming linked data and data driven semantic dam indexing incorporating statistical play by play game logs. So we have a diverse set of presentations and content. So I hope we'll see you later in the week. And in the meantime, we can continue the conversation on Slack. And thank you so much, Bethany, for getting us started today. It was great. Thank you so much. And I'm really excited to be a part of this. Thank you. Take care, everyone. And we'll see you on Slack or at the very least on Wednesday. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.